Hello, welcome to Anita the Pedagogue channel. We will be discussing the language and style of the marriage of Anansiwa. The title The Marriage of Anansiwa is significant. The use of musical performance, poetic appellations, and literary devices. Let's begin with the title. Anansi refers to the spider in a can of fancy, and in storytelling, that is Anansi Sim. He is depicted as a wise, cunning, and humorous character. Sutherland explains Anansi appears to represent a kind of every man, artistically exaggerated and distorted to serve society as a medium for self examination, making the marriage of Anansiwa a satire. His, his attitude, his cunning nature reflects how people behave. The story details the events leading to the marriage of Anansi's daughter, that is Anansiwa. Let's move on to Mogu, the musical performance. It is an account or fancy name for musical interlude, performed usually in Anansi's same, that is Anansi's stories. In oral literature, it is usually used to get the audience involved in the story performance. Imoguo emphasizes the predicament of characters. It helps the audience to follow the narration. Also, there's the use of poetic appellations or poetic language. Praises are showered on important dignitaries in the story like the chiefs. The appellations show how relevant and great these chiefs are, which is also according to the culture of Ghanaians. Anasi uses these appellations in the letters he sent to them. Let's move on to some literary devices. The story The Marriage of Anaswa is really rich in literary devices. The use of repetition. I've been thinking, thinking, and thinking until my head is earthquaking. He has retreated far, far away. The world is puzzling, it's puzzling. The world is really puzzling. There's the use of imagery visually. In this example, let me add one or two things more. Imagine a great congregation at church on an important occasion. It is time for the collection. There says the priest. There stands the collection basket in everybody's view. They call out, those born on Sunday, those born on Sunday. The quesis and aces rise, walk up and deposit their money in the baskets. Those born on Monday, the kojos and the ajwas file up, they deposit. It is coming soon to those born on Wednesday. Mark you to the Kwekus and the Kuas, and my name is Kweku. So here, basically, there's a lot of imagery as you begin to imagine what is going on in the church. Also, there's the use of metaphor. Prickly pear, cactus keeping guard on your territory borders. So here, um, there's a reference to the chief and not really prickly pear cactus. So there's a use of metaphor. There's also the use of symbolism, as the spider web symbolizes the main character Anansi's trickery ideas, which looked entangled like a web. But finally, the entanglement ends beautifully, just like um, the weaving of a web and how the story ends on a, on a beautiful note. There's also the use of rhetorical question. Finally, when I breathe my last and die, will my coffin be drawn in a fine private hairs instead of a municipal hairs? So at this point, an answer is asking a lot of questions which do not really demand answers. There's also the use of scenic doke, using a part or something to represent the whole. Here, the mattress on which I try to rest my bone, my bone here representing his entire body. There's also the use of foreshadowing. Foreshadowing is an indication of something that will happen in the future. Let's look at this example. And now, my daughter, we shall see which of those four chiefs will make the best husband for you. So in this example, it is clear that there's an indication of trouble because there are four chiefs who want to marry Anansiwa. Let's now move on and look at the literary devices, metaphor and apostrophe. O son of the gods, chief of Sapa, you too can display. O spirits, what shall I do? There is also the use of transliteration. This means translating literally from vernacular into English. 
delicious news cutting a little whiskey with me these are translations from vernacular to english and there's also some use of personification hey haven't you any sympathy for a man hit by a storm cut off the breeze so set your machine talking to help your father out time is nobody's friend so here are human attributes given to non-human um, objects and this story has a heavy use of hyperbole there's a lot of exaggeration where is that typewriter i bought for you at a price that nearly drove me to sell myself i am stirring up all the brains in my head almighty tree of ancient origin rooted in the shrine of deity don't you have any sympathy for a man struck by an earthquake of a headache roaring fire that is raising here will consume me there is the telephone still tinkling with the news the world is puzzling it's puzzling the world is really puzzling and she is a baby at the breast all these are exaggerations there's also the use of a monologue as Anansi speaks to the world at large on stage. Do you see what's happening to me? Very well, look at how I am concerned and if you so desire, laugh at me. So here he, he makes, um, he gives a speech and makes reference to the audience. Also there is the use of soliloquy where Christie speaks to herself on stage. Why doesn't he tell me what the trouble is? Well, here I go. This man, George, for how long am I going to serve him before I get him? Oh, Georgie. There's also the use of simile. You don't know what feelings are breaking the ebbing like waves inside me. I will not let you sell me like a parcel to a customer. They are racing like fire blazing through grass. So there is a the use of simile. Lots of comparisons here. The outdooring. And also, we can say that the time it is set is post-colonial Ghana. Some cultural practices were already fading out, like the rites of passage for girls to womanhood by the Akans, that is, the outdooring ceremony of Anansiwa. This brings us to the end of the language and style in the marriage of Anansiwa. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like, share, until I come your way again, keep learning and be the best version of yourself.